a pleasant day everyone so i'm here to talk about climate change but before i start let me show you a video on climate change So some disclosure, some of the studies came from the climate change studies of the World Health Organization, and some of the studies came from the studies presented by the Philippine Climate Change Commission during the 2017 National Business and Climate Summit, as presented by then Secretary Manny de Guzman. Uh, for this presentation, I'm going to talk about what is climate change, what does it mean for the health of the people, and what has been done in the Philippines to combat climate change. Temperatures are rising rapidly uh, in the world following increases in carbon dioxide uh, emissions and concentrations, as you can see from this uh, global map. So it's not really that hard during the, the hot during the 1950s, but starting 2000, uh, the whole world is getting red. There is global average surface temperature in 2020, statistically tied with 2016 as the hottest year on record, continuing a long-term uh, warming trend due to human activities. As you can see from this graph, the temperature of the world is increasing. Okay? And in 2016 and 2020, the temperature of the world, the increase in the temperature uh, surpassed one degree centigrade. The Philippines is most at risk to climate change, and in 2015, we are the, fir uh, the first country most affected by climate change. In 2021, we are fourth in the world as the country most affected by climate change. Climate change also brings a vicious cycle of risk and poverty. The cycles of destruction and reconstruction stole the economic growth, which brings about poverty. Okay. The sea levels in the Philippines is rising uh, three times higher than the global average. Uh, the Philippines has 64 coastal provinces, 822 coastal municipalities, 25 major coastal cities, 60% of all LGUs are near uh, seawater, and 13.6 million Filipinos uh, will need to be relocated because of this rising in the sea levels. So the whole Philippines is affected by the rise in the uh, sea level. So based on Philippine projections uh, for the climate change, we will have a 1.8 to 2.2 degrees centigrade increase in temperatures by 2020, by 2050. And right now we are already complaining of the uh, temperature during summer. So it's going to get hotter and hotter as the years go by. We will have wetter, wet season, so more flooding, and drier, dry season, so more uh, El Nino phenomenon, which can affect our crops. There's an increasing incidence of extreme weather and hazard events and a rise in the sea levels by 0.48 to 0.65 meters by 2100. So how does climate change affect the health of the Filipino people? So climate change undermines the biopsychosocial and environmental determinants of health. Based on studies, uh, the 2014-2016 El Nino is one of the most severe droughts ever recorded in the Philippines. And it affected most of our farmers. Uh, the coral reefs uh, to degrade by 98% by 2050, even without the uh, degradation being caused by the Chinese. So 99% by 2100. And fish harvest to decline by 50% by 2060. 
drought will bring about 20 billion losses per year through 2050. And 1.4 million will go hungry by 2030. Food prices is expected to increase by 50% by 2050. In terms of water security, the collection in Angat Dam has decreased by 500 million cubic meters in the last 15 years. So that's why we are having scarcity of water almost every year. In terms of gender, women are more vulnerable to the effects of climate change than men. And extreme weather events will is expected to cause widespread destruction and loss of lives, just like Typhoon Yolanda. We will also have an increase in waterborne diseases like diarrhea, cholera, and typhoid. We will have a surge of vector-borne diseases like dengue and malaria. And due to the heat, 10% loss in working hours is expected to be seen, while global productivity loss will rise to more than $2 trillion US dollars by 2030. So we are a nation that suffers the most from the adverse effect of climate change, despite having contributed to the least uh, to it, because we are not an industrialized nation. So we're not... Uh, really a, a major contributor to climate change. So what actions were done by the government so far? So we have the post-2015 international blueprints for sustainable development in the context of climate change. These are brought about by the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction in March 2015 in Sendai, Japan, the 2020, 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development in September 2015, and the Paris Climate Change Agreement in December 2015, where our, we are signatory to all. These are the things being done in the Philippines. Okay? Uh, so in our, we have you know, RA9729 or the Philippine Climate Change Act of 2019, which has been signed into law. This created the Philippine Climate Change Commission and the Philippine Climate Change Commission is the one responsible for making all of these programs and projects in the Philippines. The National Framework Strategy on Climate Change uh, was established in 2010. The National Climate Change Action Plan, or NCCAP, 2011 to 2028 was already formulated. Uh, you, can you can see the copy of the National Climate Change Action Plan in your canvas. And we have uh, RA10174, or the People's Survival Fund. So all of these are the programs being undertaken by the government. The government is promoting awareness on climate change and disaster risk. So we have the National Integrated Risk Information System, or the NIRIS, uh, which covers almost all of the river basin in the Philippines. Okay, so this will give you a warning sign of whether or not a disaster is coming in that particular uh, river basin. Okay. So we also have the Climate Resiliency Field Schools for Resilient uh, Rural Livelihoods and 16 selected CRS project sites. So these are the municipalities selected for uh, this climate resiliency field schools. We also have series of lectures uh, for climate change being undertaken all over the Philippines. So these are just example of you. Uh, we have the development planning approach for the 18 major river basins and the communities for resilience. Uh, project. Okay, so this project promotes effective convergence and delivery of capacity building services to LGUs through synergistic action across agendas at the national and subnational level. So these are the 12 communities for resilience modules. So these are being taught uh, for all those communities included in the core areas. Okay. So in summary, I have discussed what is climate change and how it affects the Philippines, how climate change affects health, and what actions were initiated in the Philippines. So for reference, I have the National Climate Change Action Plan and the Philippine Climate Change Commission presentation. Okay. So this is the end of the lecture. Thank you very much. And don't forget to click subscribe to our uh, Facebook, uh, for our YouTube, YouTube uh, page. And please, please like on the video. Okay, so thank you very much.